Hi, I'm Joe. I'm an alcoholic. All of us here at White Chip hope that you've been enjoying our audiobooks and AA speakers. You are welcome to join our Facebook group. Just click the link in the description and say hello. If you support the Alcoholic Anonymous cause, please hit the like and subscribe button. We upload new AA content every day, so if you want to see more, hit the notifications button. This way, you'll be the first to know we've uploaded a new video. Without further ado, let's listen to the next AA speaker. Sometimes life can knock you down, hit you like a diesel truck. And ought to learn how to fall, just getting right back up. The views expressed on this broadcast of Interview Friday do not necessarily reflect the opinions of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting or its affiliates. KHLT is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. That first time I went to a meeting, they said anything that ain't about drinking. Outside is They shook their heads and said, no, no, no. And now, broadcasting to you from KHLT Recovery Broadcasting and Kick12Radio.com on your internet dial, here's the Monty Man. Well, greetings to my friends in Recovery Type Like Family. It is good to have you with us. Yes, indeedy, I am, of course, the Monty Man, the one and only, thank goodness for all of us. Hey, you got a resentment today? Well, doggone it, you guys. Let me tell you something. Whoever it's against, whatever it's against, or the elements are whatever, listen, they're not losing any sleep over it, all right? You're the one losing sleep over it. So this is the deal. Do not stuff that thing. Talk to somebody about it, would you please? We know it's the number one offender. It takes takes more of us out than anything else. you got to talk to somebody, somebody that you're accountable to, a sponsor, a pastor, somebody that you trust, all right? You walk around with that stupid thing hanging over your head and in your heart, it's going to eat you up. And you know what we're doomed to do again. And some people say, well, I may drink again. Well, you may do worse than that. Believe me, you may. So it's, it's not worth, worth the risk. Life is too short, my friends. It is a beautiful day to be clean and sober today. It is a wonderful day to be accountable to, to, uh, each other, to lift each other up, to encourage each other. We're gonna have a lot of fun today on the show today. My guest is Richie Supa. Now, many of you know his name. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Uh, Richie is a New York singer-songwriter with over 200 cuts and five solo albums to his name. Richie's career was launched via the legendary Long Island band, the Rich Kids, who were signed by Clive Davis to Columbia Records. Richie also went on to a career on Broadway where he had the lead role in the hit musical Hair. He became a household name in the Northeast, which helped to launch his now 30-plus year career. Artists who have cut his songs reads like a who's who of music industry with over 50 million records sold. Artists who have recorded super songs include Bon Jovi, Aerosmith, Ozzy Osbourne, Micah, Pink, and legendary artists like Johnny Winter, Tom Jones, Air Supply, Glenn Campbell, Willie Nelson, and we could go on further than that, I'm sure. Richie's songs have appeared in Disney movies, featured films, and on network television, including the hit show Melrose Place. Supa has been a behind-the-scenes voice in the legendary rock band Aerosmith for years, including being on a touring as a touring member. He co-wrote several of their number one rock hits, including Chip Away, The Stone, Lightning Strikes, Pink, and Amazing. Richie co-wrote with Richie Sambora on his most recent solo album and tours with Sambora on his solo project. He currently makes Nashville his home, away from home, working with some of the best writers in town, bringing his rock and blues edge to the modern Nashville sound. And Richie is on the air with us right now via a phone interview. Richie, welcome to Take 12 Radio, man. Hey, buddy. How you doing, buddy? It, it is good to have you on. I'm doing great, and it's, it's an honor to have you on, and it certainly is... Uh, it certainly is a treat. Uh, there's a song we're going to be listening to called In the Rooms here uh, pretty quickly. Uh, and we're going to listen to the song that we just heard a, just a little tiny clip of. But you said something, uh, or sometimes life can knock you down and hit you like a diesel truck. And part of learning how to fall is getting right back up. Truer words cannot be spoken. Have you fallen down a few times, brother? I have fallen down uh, <laughs> more times than I can count. I can't count that much. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you have been around for quite a while, and, and uh, you have been in amongst uh, folks that are clean and sober and amongst people that not so much. Um, just to kind of qualify, what was going on, man? What, what was... What happened? I mean, you weren't always, you know, a bad boy, were you? Well, I mean, you know, I, I started out as, as a, you know, back in, in my teenage years, uh, um, you know, experimenting. You know, I was I was the kid that was uh, going around, and uh, after my parents had a party of, uh, instead of emptying the beer in the sink, I would just down, you know, when nobody was looking, I would empty the glass down my, down my, down my throat. And I, I was just, um, you know, I was a product of, uh, you know, the, the '60s, and um, people were smoking dope, and and um, and um, although I didn't jump on the whole psychedelics thing because I tried it once and hated it, but when I was a young musician, you know, we were innocently smoking um, smoking pot and and uh, and having fun with it all. It was part of the growing experience, but, you know, what I didn't know was there was a sleeping monster waiting. I did not know I had an addictive personality, and none of us do until it's pretty much too late. Yeah. And, yeah, you know what I mean? And yeah. You, and you look at the people who can have a little drinky poo and, you know, uh, or, or smoke a joint, or I had friends of mine who would light a joint and take three hits and put it away, and I, and I go, what are you going to do with that? He goes, well, I'm going to save it for, for next Friday. And I was the guy, who, give me that. <laughs> give me that. What do you mean to save it to next Friday? You know, I, I didn't understand that. I mean, I wasn't that kind of drug addict. <laughs> well, Richie, what, okay, in the industry, uh, you saw, I mean, you saw, did you not, a lot of people just really uh, bite the dust and, and crash and burn? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, you know, I saw a lot of people, like, you know, you got to understand something, you know, in the 60s, late 60s, early 70s, no, we didn't know the downside. Yeah. Well, no, one, no one knew the downside of of 20 years of... 10 years of smoking pot or 10 years of doing blow or, you know, no one, and no one really cared. You know, and it wasn't, we didn't have the internet back then and, it, and we didn't really know the devastation that was actually going on out there because the world was not as small as it was as it is today. So we weren't hearing about kids ODing and kids running off the road and hit trees and, you know, every once in a while it would come on the news. But now, you know, we see it. We feel it every day. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's a different world right now. It is. That it, that it is. Now, uh, something happened. Something happened that bring you to a place where a decision was made to change the direction you were going. What happened? Well, I mean, I, I, mean, I was, you know... I was a functioning drug addict, you know. I had a lucrative career as a songwriter. Um, my associations, naturally, with Aerosmith uh, in the 70s um, um, kind of put me into another level of, of drug using. Um, right. I became a, 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 a fairly famous person in, in New York between doing hair and um, I was all over the radio as a solo artist. Um, I was a singer-songwriter getting some recognition. And then um, when I kind of joined up and became friends with, with uh, Aerosmith and they started recording some of my songs, um, I was sort of catapult in, in, catapulted into another level of, uh, you know, visibility, if, you may, if I may. Mm -hmm. And so it became... Um, it became the thing to do uh, in this, back then. You know, it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll. But that expression didn't come up by accident. Right. And we, I was very successful, so I saw no reason in fixing something that I didn't think was broke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd sit home and look at all the gold and platinum records on the wall, and oh, my song is number one rock song this week, and then another one, and then on and on and on. And I, I was blessed to be able to go out and play. Uh, and tour with Aerosmith, and um, that was another level 
of, I mean, I lived that rock and roll lifestyle and saw all the, all the uh, trappings coming at me like, like stud missiles, even on nights that I, that I didn't want to snort any more blow because my nose was bleeding and mm -hmm. all of a sudden somebody would walk in with an ounce because everybody wanted to turn on the, yeah. the band and everybody wanted to hang and be seen with us. So it was just a non-stop, never-ending you know, event, and I didn't realize that I was a junkie just because I was, you know, shooting up or smoking freebase in the back of my limo instead of an alley. I was still a drug addict. Right, right. Now, now let me ask you this. A, a lot of people, you know, most people don't know what goes behind the scenes and so forth uh, at concerts unless they've had a, a, a pass to go way back into the deep, dark corners of what's going, right. going on. Uh but before a show, all right, was it was it uh, common to be blottoed and just out of it before you'd go on? Well, you got to understand something. <laughs> you know, there's a saying in the rooms that you never get as high as the first first time you get high. That's you get right. High. Yep. Um, uh, I never really got black, black you know, blacked out. Um, I got high. I knew just how much I could take. Mm -hmm. Where I thought I could play well, which is part of the conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, you know, and um, you know, it's, and that's part of living the lie. And I thought I sounded great. Um, and you know, everybody, listen, getting high is a ritual. Yeah. Okay. You bet. Everybody has their own little ritual. People roll joints a certain way. Uh, people smoke smoked pot in bongs a certain way. I was the guy who put, you know, uh, black or strawberry soda in the bottom of my bong and, and certain string. You know, it's, it's just a ritual. I mean, it was a ritual. So I had my ritual before I went on stage. And, uh, yeah, I was good and high. Uh, I was good and high. But, you know, we don't look behind to see the records that we leave. Yeah. I was literally on stage with Aerosmith when it all came to a crashing halt. I don't, I forget where we were, somewhere in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a certain member of the band had a seizure right on stage. Oh, boy. And um, I knew it was, um, it was the demise of, uh, of all of us. Yeah. On, it abruptly ended. Yeah. Um, and so, and, you know, coupled with the fact that I started to get, pulled over by the police and a couple of times I got busted for possession because they pulled me over because my taillight was out. Who cared? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but it, le it led to, uh, do you have anything in the car that I should know about? Well, well, how, you know, <laughs> mind if I search you? And yes, I do mind. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and so we all know the outcome. You have jails, institutions, or death. Yeah. You know, so um, I've been to the jails and institutions, so I'm, I don't choose to go and try to, you know, see what the third one is like. Right, right. So, okay, so it was a, it was a, a big wake-up call. It changed, changed the band in a lot of ways, didn't it? Well, it changed the band in a lot of ways, and you got to understand that, you know, it's no... Uh, it's no uh, secret. I mean, if you read the Aerosmith autobiography, you know, right. Walk This Way, there's, uh, I mentioned in the book a lot, you know, that I was uh, set up in a drug sting in Manhattan and taken down by a low-level guy in my neighborhood who told the cops that he could hand somebody uh, a high-level songwriter in Manhattan who was associated with uh, a high-level rock and roll band, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, my life, my life changed. Yeah, my life changed. I had a, I had to spend uh, almost two years in jail, and and uh, uh, luckily my conviction, they, they they handed back all my rights because I wasn't a criminal, and mm -hmm. um, and through high powered lawyering and stuff, I was able to get my rights restored, and you know, it made it all go away. But yes, it, it um, it I woke, I wound up in a jail cell. I, I tell the story and when I speak, you know, I went from Madison Square Garden to Rikers Island, <laughs> which, um, when you talk about falling from grace, 
Um, it, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, pretty big shock, you know. Like my ego is like, why don't you know who I am? Uh, you, sure. you can't do this to me. I'm, uh, I'm Richie Super, you know. And I, I tried that at a meeting, and somebody stood up and said, "No, you're a, you're a drug addict." Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, you know. So I started to realize the difference between what I was and who I was. So, so there really isn't any celebrity status in prison, is there? There is no celebrity status in prison except the gods come and going, well, man, I saw you in concert, man. Right. What are you doing in here? I love Chip Away the Stone. It's one of my favorite songs. You know, blah, you know, it's like, oh my God, look at the tattoo on your arm. It is you. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you want to, you know, you want to bury your head in, 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 in the sand. Right. Because it's embarrassing. Oh, uh, yeah. Very shameful, yeah, you know, so. Yeah. So you, so you walked in you walked in the doors of uh, some kind of recovery focused group. Was it twelve step group? I mean, I found I, I heard about the rooms through H and I. Uh huh. A kid came in to a jail meeting, and I was I signed the signed out the sign out sheet because I I heard it was about drugs, and I wanted to get out of my cell, and so I signed out curious, and I heard a young uh, Puerto Rican kid come in and share his story, and um, and he, he hit a nerve with me. It was like, hmm, man, I did that too. Uh, wow. Oh, wow, he mixed the cocaine and heroin. Wow, I love that too. Mm -hmm. And I remember sticking my hand up and talking with him and laughing about it, and, you know, and, and then um, he basically started saying, listen, I was where you sat, yeah. wearing prison green. And I didn't like it either. And you don't look good in that color either. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you how not to, how you don't have to come back here. And so, you know, yes, when I got out, I used immediately. I I was, you know, what got me through my my little jail stint of 24 months was the fact that I couldn't I, I couldn't wait to get back out and use again because mm -hmm. I never blamed it on my drugs. I blamed it on, hmm, uh, I should have changed my taillight bulb. Um, I shouldn't have been at that guy's apartment because I knew he was shaky. Um, and I shouldn't have uh, done this. I never blamed it on the drugs. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, I got out. I, I first thing I did was go cop, and I was right back to the races again because I really didn't learn anything because, you know, you know, I went through rehabs. I went through Phoenix House, uh, Project Return. Uh, uh, they gave me a meeting list, and when they when when I when I left, and they said make a meeting, and I never understood. I knew they were out there, but I I didn't think I needed them. You know. Yeah. Well, so you know, come to find out that you know rehabs are for discovery, and the meetings are for recovery. Sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Totally two different things. Yeah, yeah, you betcha. But now, you, you did learn some stuff. You did, you did learn some head knowledge in there that helped you, did you not? It, the seed was planted. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've, you've heard that many times in rooms, you know. Yeah. Where, uh, the, the, the seed was planted. I knew that there was there were meetings out there. I knew that I could go. I heard things about easy does it, you know, one day at a time. I heard that we can't do this alone. The loneliest place for an addict is to be in his own head, and that's a bad neighborhood. Right. I heard all these things. And so I finally went to a meeting one night in 1988 in South Florida. I moved out of New York to relocate because, you know, they said the only thing you have to change is everything. And, you know, when I, sure enough, when I examined my phone book, everybody in there used. <laughs> I had yeah. one of those, yeah. So it was a plot, you know, recovery is, is, is not an event. It, it, it's a process. It is a process, yes. And, it is and, I, and I stuck my, stuck my hand, put my hand up in the room, the first meeting, and I went, I, my name is Richie, I'm a drug addict from Manhattan, and I'm here to use less drugs. <laughs> you said I'm here to use less drugs? I stood up and actually said that I'm here to use less drugs. <laughs> What kind of response did that get? I got a few expletives from the back. <laughs> hey, man, you know, I'm sitting back here at Jones, and I can't believe it. Blah, blah, blah. But that same guy hugged me. <laughs> you know, it, it, for me, it was a learning lesson. I mean, I, yeah. 
I, it was part of my rock and roll persona, you know, like yeah. how could I go through life without using and how could I write songs without using. So I wasn't, I wasn't surrendering without a fight, even though I was beat up. I wasn't going down without a fight. Sure, sure. And well, that was just me, because you know what they say, some of us are sicker than others? That's right. My middle name was Sam. You, you were Sam. Well, Rich, Richie, there were obviously some pretty powerful things that happened to you while you, while you were in the rooms, and 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 still goes on in your life today in the rooms, um, which, which has been a a real part. It's contributed a, a lot, obviously, to uh, the words that were put together for the song you wrote in the rooms, which we're going to hear in a few minutes. Um, so we're going to take a short break. When we come back, can you uh, share with the listeners? Your heart and this song and why the song and so forth. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, great. Great. Folks, uh, don't go away. You don't want to miss this. More with my very special guest, Richie Supa, when we return. Hold on. Lost my job. I can't make my rent, they said. Sorry, son. Unemployment. Outside issue. Outside issue. Healing-habits.com and nationally acclaimed recovery author Carl Tucci Palmieri are both humbled and honored to have the privilege of reprinting When Mad Listens, a classic work by Cecil Rose, an original member of the well-known Oxford group. This inspirational work, like many other great works, was born out of the depths of the Depression. Works like Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People and the Clonses' Sermon on the Mount and Norman Vincent Peale's The Art of Living are in great company with the book, When Man Listens. Pick up your copy of When Man Listens by Cecil Rhodes and be the first to own this incredible book that was thought to be lost forever, reprinted in its original form. Visit healing-habits.com and be prepared to experience a very special psychic and spiritual awakening. Hey, this is Tommy Holmes, and you're listening to Interview Friday with my pal, the Monty Man. Well, welcome back, my friends, and uh, this is Take12Radio.com on your internet dial. Our email address is Take12Radio at Comcast.net, and our phone number here at the studio is 541-926-5806. You can call that number uh, 9.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., Monday through Friday. And uh, you will more than likely get our voicemail because we'll either be recording or uh, doing something goofy. But we'll get back to you uh, ASAP, usually the same day. All right, my guest today is Richie Supa. Uh, many of you know him uh, as a member of uh, Aerosmith and many of his other songs as well. And uh, I, I want to talk to you about a couple of those too, Richie. But, but right now, there was a song that, that came out here last year called In the Rooms that uh, our, my guest Richie wrote. Uh, last year, the 12-step music fest that was put on in Florida, in um, Key West, it was uh, the festival's first year last year. And, Richie, you performed there, and you performed this song as well, didn't you? Yes, I did. Now, were, were you, did somebody approach you to, to write a song, and how did it come to be? Tell us the history behind this. Well, two of my friends here in South Florida were talking, talking to me about launching a, uh, a website called InTheRooms.com, which was going to be a social networking website um, where addicts can, um, addicts and alcoholics could join and talk with each other, um, share their experience, strength, and hope, have a live chat room, um, and just um, have, a, have a place to go Yeah, um, that was, you know, completely about the recovery process and um, when they launched the website um, these two gentlemen um, Kenny P and, 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 and RT were uh, were in the meeting that I go to uh, every Friday night and uh, they said to me um, listen go to the uh, website and check out the uh, the mock-up of the, the site which is going to be launching in a month but we would love you to write a song for the website called In The Rooms. And, you know, I had a very busy schedule. I thought it was, a, a, you know, an interesting idea, um, although I didn't know how I was going to approach the, uh, the title In The Rooms mm -hmm. without selling out. I, I, I really didn't know quite what to do that, how to do that. I, you know, 
I wrote Amazing with Earl Smith years ago, and it was a huge number one record song, and it, it was about um, uh, recovery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a lot of kids found out. I got tens of thousands of emails, you know, people saying I was smoking or I had a need, about to stick a needle in my arm, and that song came on the radio, and I listened to the lyrics, I put it down, I went to a meeting, you know, just heartbreaking stuff. Just right, amazing. right. And so, uh, but in the rooms, um, you know, uh, I really believed in the website, and I, and I, and I really believed that it was going to be a very, very useful tool, so I... I just asked uh, God to help me be truthful, and um, and it just it, I wrote I wrote I wrote the song. It, it sort of unfolded. It was very very simple. It really kind of paralleled my my life, you know. And um, you know, lyrically, when you when you read it down, you know, it opens up in my younger years. I let my spirit run, getting high, drinking all the time, just for fun. And I don't know where or when I crossed that line, and I started dying. Yeah. Which is really the invisible line that all of, of us addicted folks have. We don't know when that when we took that ex, that that one drink too many, though that one joint too many. You know, we just it's that line between yeah. a, you know casual using and addiction. Sure, I don't. I don't remember. I can't pinpoint yeah. it. I can't pinpoint the time and what what event it was, but I know it was. You know, and the song goes on to say, you know, I was so far gone, I couldn't find myself on the borders of it, of insane is where I screamed for help. Hmm. Then I found the door that opened up my eyes, and I came alive. That was the night I walked into a meeting. Hmm. You know, and I said, in the rooms where broken angels go, right? And love is like an army that comes to save your soul. In the rooms, there's a miracle waiting there for you. And when you're at the bitter end, you can learn to live again in the rooms, you know. Yeah, all right. And, you know, it was just, um, I just wanted to write it like it, tell it like it was, you know. I didn't want to try to get too poetic. Mm-hmm. I knew that after I wrote it, it was a, a, a great body of work. And it was just, you know, my higher power. It was just a, it's just a spiritual thing. It, it came out this way for a reason. Yeah, well, but I lived every line, and I to- I totally concur with that because uh, you know I I hear I get a lot of music sent to me, and uh, you know it's flooded with it sometimes, and and sometimes it can be overwhelming, and then once in a while something comes along. And when I heard this song, it I don't know too many people that when they hear this thing, they're right there because that's exactly how the majority of us felt. I mean, it's it, there's a lot of stuff out there, but boy, it is so simple and it's so true to form to who we are. I just appreciate it so so much, and I know hundreds and hundreds of people do. And I thank you so much for being what I would call obedient to your higher power to write to allow him to to use you as a vessel to write something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, all right, I, I get that. You know, I, I I tell people all the time when I when they I get hundreds of emails. You know, like I I was. I was just a guy holding the pen sure. that night. You know what I mean? I was just there holding the pen. That was the writer side of me. Yeah. But, you know, I was guided through this by my feelings, you know, my heart, and my, my experience. So it was, it kind of wrote itself. It wasn't that difficult to write because the truth kind of unfolds. The truth just is a continuing thing, you know, so it just kind of unfolded. All right, my friends, hold on to your horses. If you haven't heard this song yet, it will move you. And if you have, it'll move you again. Here's In the Rooms by Richie Super. In my younger years, I let my spirit run. Getting high, drinking all the time just for fun And I don't know where or when I crossed that line And I started dying I was so far gone, I couldn't find myself on the borders of insane is where I scream for help Then I found the door that opened up my eyes And I came alive 
In the rooms where broken angels go And love is like an army that comes to save your soul In the rooms there's a miracle waiting there for you When you're at the bitter end you can learn to live again in the room And God was something Didn't understand Till a stranger came And took me by the hand And he helped me through What I couldn't do alone And I knew I was home In the room with my guests are Richie Supa here on Take12Radio.com on your internet dial and you can hear Richie's music right here as we play our three hour looping sessions 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and it changes and updates every single day uh, the 12 Cent Music Fest which is coming up and we're going to hear a promo for that in a second but Richie, this is your second year performing there and uh, we're going to have a whole lot of fun this year we've got some, some pretty wild people showing up <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, um, a lot of fun, and a lot of you know a lot of kids are hitting me up on uh, and on the on the space. And, you know, I should have an, a, a, a CD of these songs available by then. You know, and, and this is available on Amazon.com. Right. Um, if they need, if they want to, you know, you know, download it and um, it's to drive around in the car. I just it's, it's turning out to be sort of an anthem for a lot of a lot of people, which is. Does my heart good, you know? Yep. I mean, that's the job of a writer. Like, if it resonates with, you know, if you can feel what I feel, then I, then I did my job. Well, you know, it's 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 such it's such a fun thing for for folks that do what I do. Uh, when we come across something like this, and and we tell our colleagues and our friends, hey, come come, come over here. You got to hear this song. You got to hear this song. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's it's just a hoop for for us to do that. And what a what a pleasure to do that. Uh, now. Mark Lindholm is the uh, the MC for the event. Have you ever met Mark before? Um, I think I met him one time. Yeah. You are gonna. This guy, you're just gonna fall over laughing. I mean, it's you, you better come with a new gut because you'll, it'll rip your gut out. <laughs> um, he is just something else. And of course, we all know the self esteem guys and and uh, uh, and Don and Rich. They're just great people. Um, but uh, the in the rooms thing. And you explained a little bit about what it is. Uh, you're on there, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm on the. You mean the, the website? Yeah. Yeah, the website. Yeah. Um, right at the very top, as soon as you sign in, there's there's the song in the rooms. But I'm on there all the time. I'm I'm uh, a recovering addict who's 
talks to a lot of friends on a daily basis. It's spreading all over the country. It's in like I think it's in seven or eight different countries. I speak to people in India and England, and it's just it's 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 unbelievable. And so, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm there. I'm on there all the time, and I, and I support this a hundred percent. So, so what do people do? They come on uh, for the listeners. I'm on there too, but for the listeners, a benefit. If somebody wants to uh, join the community there, they go to intherooms.com? Intherooms.com. Um, you'll come to the website. Uh, it'll say register. You can re- you register. You you fill out a profile. It's like a MySpace page. You can put photos, your clean date, what, what you know, whether you're in AA, NA, CA, um, a little bit about yourself, what your interests are, you know, just... Uh, if you don't want to use your real name, you can come up with a surname. Um, and, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's like a MySpace page, but only it's all about recovery. There's a live chat room. You can go on and, and, and do live, you know, live chats with people and uh, um, just um, it's messaging back and forth and how you doing today. You come on, you sign on. It's just a, a daily thing. There's a There's tapes. From different meetings that you can um, listen to, mm-hmm. it's, it's got everything. You can you can actually have those tapes uh, uh, put on your own page too. You can right? have the tapes put on your own page. Um, you can actually go to a meeting. If you can't make a meeting, you can bring a meeting to the house. Right, right. And that's what it is. And so it's just um, it's a, a very unique. You know, uh, people talk about well, maybe it's stepping on the traditions. Uh, I don't, I don't think so. I, I, no, you know. no, it's it's not. And and you know, I went through that when we uh, started with Take Twelve Radio four years ago, uh, and we we really wanted to cross our T's and dot our I's in all the right places as as much as we could. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I I've, I've been in uh, in my fellowship now for twenty three years, and I learned a lot of stuff. I found out that I was totally in left field when it came to the anonymity tradition. I, I, I thought there was all sorts of law going on there, and it was, has been totally misunderstood. And we are a lot freer to do and share the message than I think some of us have been led to believe. And I think you know what, Monty? I've never been. I've never been a twelve-step Nazi. Okay. Right. Me I'm not the guy. I'm the wrong guy to talk to about. Oh, don't say the sober word. You can't say the sober word, the S word, in a in a NA meeting, and you you can't say this word in that meeting. And oh, I, know. I, I just I just don't get it because years ago in LA they used to have these renegade meetings where the literature for AA and NA were side by side on a table. Right. And I heard a woman who back then had 35 years, and she said. I'll never forget this. She goes, the same disease that took me into the closet to get my bottle of vodka is the same disease that takes a dope fiend down the alley to cop a bag of dope. Yes, thank you. Well said. And well so said. I never forgot that. So yeah. when I hear people put their hand up and go, well, don't say that. Don't say the S word, the sober word. I, I go, and I, I just put my hand, I, I just jump on them. Yeah, yeah, uh, I hear you. Know, you. Because... <laughs> As a traveling musician, years ago, when I needed to go to a meeting in the middle of the United States, I couldn't find an NA meeting. Mm-hmm. But I could find an AA meeting. Mm-hmm. So what was I supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Reuse or go to an AA meeting? Mm-hmm. I went to an AA meeting. Yeah. Because I, I needed a meeting. That's right. A meeting. And so... It, it stopped me from using that night, so I, I don't get I don't get all that. So. Now, and you know, it, it's it's it, here. Here's the deal, Richie, and I've said this before: if you're going to live under the law, then you have to obey every every aspect. Otherwise, you've broken the whole law. I would much rather live under grace. And you know, right. I have a my my first sponsor told me the traditions are written in Jello. Boy, I don't want to say that to some Nazis. I'll tell you that much. Right. Uh, but but the deal the deal of it is a lot of it, Richie, is people are just parroting what somebody said before them, what somebody said before them, and that person going back far enough does not know their history accurately, and so people have been sold a bill of goods in a lot of areas. And it's not just with our recovery fellowships. It's in all sorts of areas of life. And, and, you know, and the whole thing, 
we we just got to let that stuff fall off our shoulders. I mean, let's major on the majors, not on the minors, for crying out loud. Exactly. You yeah. know, for people listening, don't get caught up in all that stuff. No. You no. Know, you, if you have a drug problem, you earned your, you earned, you earned a seat, and that and that seat is in any meeting that you can get to. Okay. Um, you go and get recovery. Recovery doesn't have to be. It can be in any fellowship. Go and get it. Yeah. Because it's all about the disease of addiction. And yeah. so, um, oh, I can't go there. I never drank, so what do I do? You know, <laughs> you know. that's why we have little things like make no, make no mistake about it, alcohol is a drug. Yeah. You know, it's just, a, oh, God. I know. <laughs> um, I was told oh, wow. years ago to take what I need and leave the rest. <laughs> <laughs> so I took what I needed and left, I, and left the noise. And, I, you know... I, not everything we hear in the rooms we agree with, but you take what you need, what you need, and leave the rest. You know. So for the yeah. newcomers out there who are listening, that's how you deal with this. Go to a meeting, take what you need, leave the rest, and just remember that recovery is portable. You can take it with, with you wherever you go. Okay. And, and we, you know, the worldly there's enough worldly clamor out there. We don't need need to be dragging it around with it. That's that's for sure. Exactly. And, uh, one, that's one of the things I like about these recovery events that are popping up all over the place now. The the concerts. Uh, you know, a lot of the political mishmash that goes on at uh, area level or district level, depending on what, what program you're in, or, or, or regional level or whatever, a lot of that stuff, that's left at the gate, man. You know, if it's in the meeting, it's left at the door, supposedly. At a concert, it's left at the gate, my friends. Yeah. We come together, you know, and we have all these easy ups all over the place, so selling food that's not good for you. And you come together for the yeah. spirit of in the spirit it of is, recovery. It is no. awesome. It is, and I see people walking around with with AA uh, necklaces and ones with NA necklaces and ones with necklaces that have the AA Allen on and NA logo mixed together. Oh, nobody, right. Nobody's fighting with each other. None of that stuff's going on. You know, it's 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 like I remember Richie. My very first uh, actual football game that I ever went to was way after I was you know I was already out of college and everything was a Raiders and a 49ers game down to L.A. Coliseum, and I had seen I thought I'd never see this. There were men, I mean, there were husbands and wives on two separate teams walking together, you know, and I thought, wow, what a concept! I wonder when the program's going to get that. Unbelievable. You know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to listen to another song right after this break called Dancing in the Rain. Folks, don't go away. More with my guest, Richie Supa, after this. Hey, everybody. I want to invite you to join me for this year's 12 Step Music Fest on November 5th through the 8th in the beautiful Florida Keys. There's going to be songwriting workshops, oceanfront camping, pool and hot tub, marathon meetings, and the famous floating meetings where we all well step into the water. This year's performing artists include... 2009 Prism Award winners, the recovery band Selfie Scene, and the incredible Ricky Super. Also playing will be Freebo, Mike Vito, and Bubba Matt, just to name a few. And just when you thought it couldn't get any better, your MC will be internationally known recovery comedian, Mr. Mark Lundholm. So get your tickets now at www.12stepmusictest.com. That's 12stepmusictest.com. And get ready to rock in recovery. This is Tony Morosi from the recovery band Selfish Steam, and we're listening to the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show with the Monty Man on KHLT Broadcasting. And uh, speaking of Selfish Steam and Ricky, uh, Richie Supa, the PRISM Awards. Congratulations, man. Oh, thanks. That was, a, that was a fun, fun evening to share the award with those guys. That was a great, a great evening. That, that was awesome. I, I, I regret not being able to have been there but i was i was right on top of it i was sitting by the phone and uh, tony uh, uh on his way there we were talking about he said, i'll call you i'll call you back just as soon as i can just as soon as i can <laughs> so uh, of course he got right and we get wrapped up in things but when he called me back he said he said you'll never believe it and i go what and he goes we both won <laughs> That's great. and i thought wow that is such a yeah. god thing that is so awesome and i had the opportunity to go up on stage and sing a couple of songs, you know, live. Um, wow. I, well, one of which was in the rooms. Um, so that that was that was a treat. Yeah. Gosh. What a what a what a and, way. You know, there was a very famous person backstage, and I can't remember mention his name, but he was he was he was uh, you know, giving out an award, and he goes, "Oh my God, I can't believe it was you!" You know, like uh, <laughs> last time I saw you, you were. <laughs> 
know. Three sheets of the wind and yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, isn't that fun? Ah, what a fun thing. All right, this song, Dancing in the Rain, why don't you tell us about it? Well, Dancing in the Rain is just, you know, it, it's it's about when life shows up and 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 smacks you, smacks you around a little bit. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's not only about drugs, it's about drugs, life, love, um, I, basic, basic adversity in life. And um, it's just, um, it's just, uh, it, it, it reminds us that, you know, who we are, uh, we wind up who we are from where we've been, <laughs> so to speak. And so th that's the message of the song, pretty much. All right, folks, here is Richie Super singing his song, Dancing in the Rain. Hit you like a diesel truck And ought to learn how to fall Just getting right back up Looking back I made mistakes I watched a lot of bridges burn The road to wisdom leads us to Making some wrong turns And you learn to see by walking through the dark where we've been makes us who we are Life's not waiting for the storm to pass Or running from the pain It's learning how to dance in the rain Love can take and bruise a heart Bend it like a broken wheel Leave your world so torn apart That only time can heal I wound up a better man For every single tear I cry And I wouldn't be where I am If I never tried You learn to see by walking through the dark where we've been just makes us who we are Life's not waiting for the storm to pass Or running from the pain It's learning how to dance in the rain Prayers that go unanswered Can sometimes hurt like hell in life to have And where we've been just makes us who we are Life's not waiting for the storm to bed Or running from the bed It's burning down the Supa, Richie, you have a gift to my brother. You certainly do. Thank you, my friend. Uh, without mentioning any names, would you say that uh, the increase or, or, or the, the amount of people in the rock and roll industry today from what you can observe from where you're at now, um, that those folks getting into recovery is on the increase? I think that... Um I think that there that it is on the increase. I think that um, because recovery is it's in the forefront right now, I don't think that musicians stay in it in the in the drug game as long as we did. Mm -hmm. um, 
you got to know that I wish uh, that there was a program back when I was addicted. Um, we didn't have MAP or any assistance, you know, programs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, con uh, connected with the Granny Foundation or anything like that. There was no place that an addict, a musician who was an addict, could go um, to get help yeah. within within his community, within his music community. And now there's a lot of um, places where you, you can reach out and, and, and get help. Right, right. So I think there, I think there's a lot of people, a lot more people walking through the door. Certainly, a lot of musicians that I work with, and artists, ask me about my journey. You know. Um, you can see that inquisitive look in their eye, like they have a problem. They just they don't want to, they just don't want to mention it, but they just they, they, you know. I just think that, 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 that there's more doors opening now. Sure, sure. Well, that's 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 good news, and, and uh, gosh, more power to those organizations and, and those fellowships. Uh, do you and the guys from Aerosmith keep in touch? Yes. Yeah. yeah I, I speak to Stephen from time to time. Uh -huh. um, uh, he's 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 on a busy schedule. I'm on a busy schedule, but every once in a while, I'm, you know, my phone will ring. And uh, uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't speak to him as much as I used to. Um, but we, uh, we we stay in touch. You know, That's good. he's in his uh, I'm in his heart, and, he, and vice versa. So you know. That's great. That's good. That's good stuff. Richie, any last words for the listeners today before we? Uh take off from this uh, really a, a fine opportunity for me I thank you very much uh, what would you say to the folks I mean I just gotta you know tell the folks that you know I mean if you're in recovery um, you know and, and and you and your life took an unexpected turn because of uh, either drugs or alcohol you know, you know this is a beautiful journey I mean I I stayed in the rooms because someone told me that if I stayed long enough, I would, I'd experience a miracle and I would be able to get my life back. And um, that's really why I'm here today. Um, I came in, you know, broke, busted, and disgusted, um, and, and a sick, sick and suffering addict. And today I'm, I'm a whole person again. I have the love and respect of my family and, and my kids and, and I have my career back. You know, I just, um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get the help I needed anywhere except in, in, in the rooms. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the, you know, the, the therapeutic value of one addict helping another is without parallel. You know, that, that's, they didn't just make that up. Yeah, <laughs> it is a no, truth, man. <laughs> you know, and you know, even when I came in in the beginning, obnoxious as I was with my rock star ego, saying I wanted to use less drugs, somebody put their arms around me and hugged me. <laughs> and so, you know, um, you know, somewhere after a year of going to meetings, I was sitting in a Sunday night meeting, and I just got this this cold feeling over me, and I knew that the, I came to believe I knew the second step had entered my body. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, so it's a repetition in the beginning. And, you know, I just, uh, for me, I thought using drugs, coming, going to meetings was a death sentence, you know, but now I, uh, I understand the process. So, so if you're, if you're confused or you're not sure if you belong, you know, believe that I believe until you believe. That's what someone told me. Uh. You know, so, um, you know, for me, it saved my life. Recovery is the center of, of my universe. And so um, whatever I can do to give back, I mean, if I can use my celebrity in any way to give back or my talent as a songwriter, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Right. You know, that's why I'll be at the 12th set music fest. To be, you know, that's I do it because I, I, I just want to make... I want to move move people and show show people that there is fun and a light at the end of the tunnel. As they say, the light at the end of the tunnel is not no more no longer a locomotive. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> there you go. And we are so glad that you uh, you know. I mean, I guess it's kind of weird to say we're so glad you're one of us, but we are. You know. Uh, it, yeah, it's just kind of weird. Oh, we're so glad that you, your life got messed up and now you've joined us. Well, we're not glad that you know, this lives got messed up, but we are really, really grateful that we've joined each other in this, is not just a cause, but a whole new way of living, a whole new way of thinking, 
because our thinking was sure messed up. Richie, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. My pleasure, Monty, and, uh, you know, I, I hope to see you down in uh, Key West and uh, for all the folks out there in, in, in Radio Land, um, you know, keep, you know keep, keep going to meetings. You know, it works if you work it, so work it. Uh, abs- <laughs> absolutely. Richie, stay on the line for me uh, uh, for, for a minute while we close out the show. Folks, yeah. uh, do not forget the 12-Step Music Fest. Uh, tickets are available at 12stepmusicfest.com, or you can call 305 305- Two nine six four seven two six. You can follow the links uh, here at takes12radio.com as well for information. If you would go to 12stepmusicfest.com, uh, you will be able to listen to the different interviews that we here at Take 12 Radio have interviewed the artists. Um, there are many interviews of the artists that were there last year, as well as uh, the interviews that are being caught up every week, uh, the artists that are going to be there this year as well. So don't miss out on that. Uh, please get your tickets early. Like my friend Mark Wilhelm says, you can never register too early, but you can register too late. So you don't want to you don't want to miss out on that. November fifth through the eighth, Richie Supa will be there. So will I. Until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man, along with Richie Supa, and we are wishing God's perfect serenity for you. I'm calling your sponsor! This has been a broadcast of KHLT Radio. Kitty, 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 kitty.